Hi YouTubers, here I am again. Um, I'm trying to catch up today because I've been kind of lax in getting this done. Too busy and actually just haven't had a lot of ener energy sometimes. So this one, this first word is called spiritual cataracts and it was given March 17th and the Lord said God wants to heal those who have never known enough unconditional human love such that they have difficulty receiving love from others and the love of God. When trust is greatly violated, it's difficult to restore in the heart of a child. Even as an adult, the one violated as a child has difficulty trusting authorities, much less God. Children who haven't been protected by their parents and abused do not develop normal trust like other children do. They grow up with fear, anxieties, insecurities, lack of self-confidence, intimidation, rejection, which turns to anger at being rejected, rebellion and independence, among other things. Many become bipolar or schizophrenic or have multiple personalities. A person can say the right thing in his heart, like being encouraged to say, I'm accepted in the beloved, and things that you know build up his heart to believe in the unconditional love of God, but there's something that has to be done inside his heart by God because it's so hard for them to receive and believe. Now, when God does do that, he can use a prophetic word, he can breathe on a scripture, he can use the love of another individual, or he can supernaturally impart his love. He can fulfill the parts of your love language, as one author calls it, where you receive things even though you don't feel deserving. But in the end, it's God himself that has to change that emptiness in your heart. Thus, it is necessary to seek his presence to be healed over and over again sometimes, especially when you've been molested as a child. You cannot make up through a pastor, his wife, or others in the body of Christ for the love you didn't get from a parent. That's just a fact. Those things help, but there's an empty hole in your heart because there's resistance to receiving the very love that you need. This is because our perceptions have been distorted and perverted into mistrust, unbelief, suspicion, rejection, anger, and bitterness. And all the acceptance in the world doesn't necessarily make up for that which you did not get as a child because it's not coming from the one you needed it from. It can help, but it can't replace it totally. You need God, you need God. You need God in your life because only Jesus, who is God, who came in the flesh, can make up for that empty hole in your heart and heal your nerves, your mind, your heart, your soul, your emotions through his presence loving on you and healing all the wounds and bruises, all the cracks in the vessel that you are. Until you invite Jesus and Holy Spirit into your heart, there is still lack and wantonness. God is the missing ingredient that troubled lives need more than anything in this world and soaking in that love is what heals us. Ephesians 3, 16 to 19 says this in the Amplified Classic. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. May Christ through faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely in love, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth, length, height, and depth of it, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God. May God have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. So until you really know the love of God, you can't receive the fullness of all that he is. And that's why he's coming, like with a tsunami of love, he said so that we will know that and we will be able to do great exploits in his name. The other word that I just got is um, 
not exactly what I'm used to getting, but um, it's called Winners and Whiners. <laughs> not whiners, like wah, 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 but whiners, W-I-N-E-R-S. And 1 Peter 4.1 says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abdom abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. 1 Timothy 6.12, the Passion Version says, So fight with faith, faith for the winner's prize. Lay your hands upon eternal life, for this is your calling, celebrating in faith before the multitude of witnesses. And then the word of the Lord was, Spending time with me is how you gain the prize, beloveds, for I am your resource. I have everything you need. I'm not the harsh taskmaster. Satan is the harsh taskmaster. He is the one who pushes, shoves, drives you to extremes, who does not allow you to rest. When rest is not allowed, a child or adult person will look for it in other ways, just as you cannot look at the natural sun continuously. You're not expected to work for the sun, the S-O-N, continuously. Striving is part of perfectionism along with drivenness and discontentment with self and others. Underestimating others also accompanies the harsh taskmaster. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God, it says in Hebrews 4, 9, New King James Version. People are sometimes given to extremes, the Lord said. Some become whiners and rest becomes party time where there's no thought for God in their hearts or what I want. All they care about is the world and its lures. But the winner is the one who spends time with me, talking with me, worshiping me, getting to know me like a lover who wants to know me better and then obeys my leadings and instructions, but they are not striving, they are in rest, doing what I lead without worry or trying to compete or um, out of sibling rivalry. Those who love me obey me, I said. So obedience proves love, like the two sons, where one son said he would work but didn't do the work, and then the other son avoided it at first, but in the end he did what his father asked. In this hour, it's so important to stay in me, and you will be a winner. I will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. I will wake up the whiners who have lost focus, so they will have a chance to turn back to me. Renounce all stubbornness and any alignments with false teaching, false prophecy, or false authorities. Ask me to show you any deceptions in your thinking, and I will remove them. Thank you and God bless you for listening.